understand the basics of this issue. So I'm going to cover two things, inshallah. The first thing is, is the whole issue of 18 degrees. What is it? Who supports it? How is it supported? What's the whole uh, discussion about observations versus, um, versus 18 degrees? Or is it one and the same thing? Are the two separate things? That kind of discussion. And then going to the Hezbollah Nomar timetable or the Moonsight.com timetable. What is it? What's going on with that? Um, why the ulama who have said there's errors in it, why have they said there's errors in it? So these, and that's kind of briefly, I'm going to quickly run through this, because I think you've been through this before with what Mufti Sa'ad just had last time. So I just want to kind of quickly just run through this, inshallah. Um, so in terms of this, fir it firstly, obviously, is, if we all understand this, that it's a duty of all of us to actually understand this issue. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this. Um, so in terms, of, in terms of observations, first thing we know that in terms of Quran and Hadith, the verse of the Quran are quite clear. We're talking about Yetabayyan Ulakum, that, that when the white thread becomes distinct from the black thread, that's when subastatic starts. Now the crucial part in that is that when it becomes distinct to us, it, 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 it was the verse of the Quran, I don't think Arabic's working properly on here, um, but the, the crucial part is lagum. When white thread becomes distinct to us, to our eyes, it becomes clear, then that's when, that's when fajr time starts. Now that sometimes causes a few issues with some people, because they say, that, okay, now there's, there's two, um, two views about when Fajr actually starts. They speak about the first, if you want, the first light, and they talk about when the whiteness spreads. Now, the, the view that is almost unanimous, that all the ulama agree that the strongest opinion is when that first light appears, and that light becomes the light that spreads horizontally. Now, that is subhasadi. Now, initially, before that, there is a vertical light. And that vertical light, alhamdulillah, we observed it last year in October. And that appears like a pyramid. But then what happens with that light? That diminishes. That disappears. And then it becomes a stage where it becomes like a first a, a light, and then it spreads horizontally. Now, that is subh And alhamdulillah, we have been to observe this on a number of occasions. And we've seen this in... <laughs> and what time it occurs. In terms of the hadith, the hadith is the same in terms of what time Fajr starts. Now, in terms of observation, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I know we've got all of my here. Um, the crucial thing is, in terms of observations, now, there are varying observations. You will see that there are observations that have been done in central London, in London itself. There's also been observations in Blackburn. There's also been observations in Preston. And in the Arab world, in, the, in India and in Pakistan, in, in the in Canada as well. So, and, and I have that we have lots of observation records. Now, what's crucial to understand is that not anyone can go and observe um, a subasadic anywhere. This is subject to the atmospheric conditions. So what happens sometimes is people observe the night sky and they say, look, we can see stars in the sky. So therefore, we, you know, whenever that first light appears, that's subasadic. Well, it's not as straightforward as that. We have noticed, uh, observing on water and days, we've noticed that if there's cloud cover, even 30 or 40 miles away, even that makes it difficult to observe subasadic. If there's one bulb flushing, if, if, if there's a bulb flashing in the distance of a ship, that makes subasadic very difficult to see. So in terms of observation of subasadic, they must be observed in the right conditions, and it must be away from light pollution. If it's not away from light pollution, then the results can never ever be accurate. And what we found is, observations that are done, 
taking light pollution into consideration have shown a particular time for Fajr Salah. And these are some observations that we've, we've seen in the UK. So you see the green dots and the red dots. Now, in terms of the green dots, they've all shown that Fajr and Isha times occur at a certain time. And you can see, in terms of direction of, of sunset or sunrise, or in terms of sun rising, generally the sun appears between, between um, roughly about east, it will go towards southeast and northeast. That's generally the direction of where the sun rises. In terms of sunset, it will be between, between southwest and northwest. Sorry, yeah, between southwest and northwest. Now you can see here, in terms of the observation that we did, we did observations from here, water on the nose. And, and, and at that time, the sun was actually rising in the northeasterly direction. So the closest land we had on the horizon was near Norway. So it was quite a distance away. And, and our observation showed that 18 degrees was absolutely correct. That's what it showed. In terms of other observations that matched that, the, the observation of the Ulama of, of Bakli, again, looking in the northeasterly direction, they found the same results. Also, we've got the Ulama in Preston, who didn't observe Swasadi, but observed the Isha time. And this is also sometimes an issue that people say. They normally say that how can we, how can we use the same time difference between, you know, for, for subasadic time as we do for Isha time. As in obviously that will only work if we're talking about the whiteness fading. So generally what you'll find is when the whiteness appears for subasadic, time difference between the whiteness appearing and sunrise will be the same between that of sunset and when the whiteness disappears again for Isha time. Martin actually talks about it in detail as well and, and lots of astronomers are of that opinion. And, and this is what observations have shown. So these Preston observations also show 18 degrees. Also the Arab scholars, the observation that was done by the scholars in Saudi, the one that was actually published, there was a report published by Saudi ulama, which uh, uh, sorry, was unpublished. But again, that was refuted. And when we worked on their research again, they found 18 degrees was most accurate. The Canadian ulama, who had all sorts of conditions, if you, if you go into their website, you'll see the condition that they laid clear in terms of the observations. Again, they found 18 degrees not to be put, not to be, Oh, sorry, I find 8 degrees to be completely accurate. In terms of the red observations here, these are the observations that were done in Blackburn. Now, these observations were done both of Subhasadik and of Isha times. Now, you can see quite clearly, if you're observing, if you're observing from this location, if you're observing either way, there's, there's, if you want the dark red there, or even the yellow there, these are areas of high light pollution. So if these scholars were observing and they found the times of Fajr to be much later, and we can see that the timetable here, that was due to them um, looking into the light pollution. Because if you're looking into light, if we, were to turn off the, if we were to turn on the lights here, and with the lights on, the projector would be hard to see. Why is that? Because this light here is stopping the light from the projector appearing on there. If something as simple as this light here can cause that much issues, you can think about the hundreds of lights that are in a city or a town, and the issues that can cause. And that's basically what happens. So, so when they observed there, they were observing, it was like they were looking into light pollution, looking into that, they saw Fajr much, you know, much later. And that makes more sense because that light took longer to appear. And Isha time was the same. They're observing to areas of, of high light pollution. So therefore the times they observed were, were, were different if you want. And th these are the issues. If when conditions are followed for the observation of Subhasadiq, we have found, and this is more than, I know sometimes people just talk about in terms of 18 degrees, some kind of calculation method. It is, but it's based on scientific research and observations. Any kind of report, whether you're talking about the weather or talking about anything in astronomy, is based on observation. So it's not calculation versus observation, it's observations that prove 18 degrees that have occurred all, all over the world versus observations that were done in unsuitable conditions. That's the situation we've got. So in terms of 18 degrees, what is 18 degrees? I mean, sometimes people are kind of confused with that. Now, 18 degrees is basically, if we, if, if we imagine the whole world being a flat plane, if you want, and uh, where we're standing, when the sun is, is 18 degrees below the horizon, that we consider to be 18 degrees. So this is here. This is 18 degrees here. Okay? And that, that is when the majority of scholars across the world have said 18 degrees is the time that first light occurs. Sometimes people will find things uh, not.
those conditions, we have asked these astronomers, that is as a re they are talking about under general conditions. General observations made in general conditions. So if you observe the night sky right now in London, you, it will be hard for you to determine the between 18 and 15 degrees. It will be hard. Because of light pollution, there's other conditions. But if the conditions are correct, the conditions are right, then it will be possible to observe. Here, you can just see a couple of pictures here. This is Subakadu. You can see almost a pyramid kind of shape. And I'm like, if, 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 if anyone wants to observe this, if you observe this in the first week of October, that's the best time of the year to observe that. And that, if you want, is true dawn here, when the whiteness actually, actually, fade, actually appears horizontally in the horizon. Now, that's basically 18 degrees. And I can go into a dozen of research in terms of the scholars speaking about 18 degrees. We've got Ulama here that we know that, I, I, I think Sheikh Haytham was here last week as well, he mentioned that there's almost a consensus of Ulama across the world that 18 degrees is when Subhasadi occurs. I don't think there's any doubt about that. The question here is, what about the timetable that they're using in this masjid and other masjid, the Hizbul Ulama timetable, the moonsight.com timetable? What about that? What's that all about? Because when you open their books, their claims seem to be very, very kind of, it seems to be very, very good. I've already explained one biggest issue that was light pollution. It wasn't considered. When, when um, that organization sent their timetable, their research to the muftis across India and Pakistan, we have two of those fatwas back. These are their own scholars based on their own questions. One fatwa came back from Darun Karachi and, and it said quite clearly that the reason you've come up with this time period is because you've got a lack of knowledge, depth in the issue of Subhasadik. That's what the fatwa said. The other fatwa that we've got a copy of said quite clearly, it said how can you use observations done in Blackburn across the whole of UK? And both these fatwa didn't even consider the facts that I'm going to present to you now, inshallah. So this is, is, these are their claims. If you read their books, they say, first thing, they made extensive and continuous observations for a whole year. They said, when observation wasn't possible, they used a process called Akrabul Ayyam. Akrabul Ayyam basically is, is for example, to the, if last night we observed, and we found Subhah Sadiq to occur at, I don't know, 120, and today we couldn't observe for whatever reason, tonight we couldn't observe, so we'll use yesterday's time for that. That's Akrabul Ayyam, basically. And yeah, I'll explain the further details there. So that's what they said they've used. Then they say they've used a criteria used by... Now, and that, this is a scholar respected right across the Asian world and the Arab world. He's been, he's been praised in all sorts of books as well. So if that is the case, then that's a huge bit of evidence there. Now I'm going to explain these three claims and then show the issues with these claims. The first one about continuous observations. We've found, we've got a copy of the original observations. And in the observation, we've found there's very few actual observations that took place. Possibly 50, if, if we look at the details. In terms of records we've got, in terms of, in terms of budget time, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I think there were about 2 for August as well. There were about 11 observations that we've got copies of. They said they've got 50, we've got 11 original, these are the original observations. 11 dated. 11 dated, yeah. And 27 for the whole year successful. Okay. So only 27 for Subhasadi. Okay. For Subhasadi we've got 27 observations. And the biggest thing with the observations is, is they, they say they observe the time and they recommended a different time. And that's the biggest issue. Because if, if I'm going to go out and observe and I'm going to tell everyone that I observe Subhasadi at 353, and then you tell everyone to continue eating until 10 past 4, then there's a big issue there. It's, it's, you're basically saying that at times we observed, we don't have confidence in it ourselves. Or otherwise, it doesn't really fit a perfect line chart. So we're going to shift things if you want. And that's the biggest issue we've got. So in terms of the observation, you can see I've put some examples on the, on the, on the board there. So, um, so on the 21st of May, for example, they observed both first light, that's what I spoke about. It's the first light that leads to that light spreading. Okay? And they observe something called Dabayun. Now, Dabayun basically means is when that light spreads. Now, that light spreading, it's difficult to judge that. What, what is spread? For one person, something spreading a little bit is spread. For other people, spreading across the, the whole surface is spread. So, which one is it? And that's why the scholars prefer the first light view. And, and that's across the board, according to, you know, according to the four imams. Now, um, so in terms of the, so they observe those two times. So they say first light they observed at 2 hours 22 minutes. That's 2 hours 22 minutes before sunrise, they observed that, you know, Subhasadi occurred, the first light appeared. 
They said to Balaam, this light had spread one hour, 32 minutes before sunrise. Now, in, in fiqh, the way things work is that when you say you're going to follow a particular opinion, then you follow one opinion. So, for example, if we say we perform, you know, there's the issue of tulfiq and sharia, where, where if you've got, um, if you're saying you're following one particular mother, one particular view, then you follow that view completely. You don't take halfway, halfway kind of views. Like, for example, if you say um, that a particular time starts at this time, the first light view, then you take the first light view. If you say it's tabayin, then take tabayin. There's no kind of in the middle kind of view. And that's the kind of thing they've done. So they said first light is either 2 hours 22 minutes, or fajr is 1 hour 32 minutes. But the recommendation they've given is 1 hour 51 minutes. So that means that those following first light, if they're kind of using that opinion, then that's 31 minutes off. So if someone was supposed to, um, um, if, if you want to start eating, go on, sorry. So is, is, there, is there any evidence to, 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 for them to have changed this time? So to, is there any reason? Is it, was it convenience? Was it, was it some, some other factors? Because there must be something for them to say, we saw it at 1.30 and we gave it time 1.50. So I think what's happened is they actually gave it to no, me. No, basically, I met him himself, but you know, this was in 2004, and I met him when he came in the first time. In terms of, I'm, I had an email conversation with them, you can see that I think it's on all that website. Now, as well. if they, if they use this term phasing in and phasing out, like, you know. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> now they've come up with this here. But in 2004, they didn't have this term here. But later they come, they use this phasing in and phasing out. So, what they say in the, uh, in the in a month, winter months, they use the first light. And in the summer months, they use the, in the spreading of light there. And what they do from the first light, they cut what they call it slowly, so they take like phasing towards what they call it, the spreading of light there. And then slowly, slowly uh, when they when it comes there uh, to Tabidun, the spending of light times, then slowly, slowly when the um, summer months when they when they when they, tried, when, when they recede also, then they try to look phase out towards against first light again. But if you look at the definition of phasing in and phasing out also, they haven't even done that also. So it's just basically I think the deceiving and killing the people like you know, or we just doing phasing and phasing out. But if you look at the definition of phasing in, phasing out, and if you look at the times there. Uh, the timetable times, and if you look uh, at the original times, see if they've met the tabillion times, the summer times there, they haven't done that also. Uh, uh, but their timetable has actually been compiled by Dr. Khalid Shokan. Uh, that's later. No, that's we met him in 2010. Yeah, but that's a later issue, like, you know. Sorry, 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 so, sorry, so, so, again, just to relate this myself. The, 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 the witnessing that they've done was, we, we, we've got about 27 oh, times the population in, in, that, in the whole year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the rest of the time was put together by Dr. Khalid Shoko. No, 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 no. They they feel it in themselves, like you know. Yeah. And they feel it in like you know. So example, they just uh, judged it like you know. If it was two, two hours twenty-two minutes at the beginning, like you know, and it was what it was, uh, ten minutes or something, then they slowly, slowly, slowly. So where did Dr. Khalid Shoko came from? No, Shoko, Shoko, he came into the picture about uh, I think mid two thousand, like you know, two, two thousand and four, two thousand and five or something. He came to the picture then. Um, in between what they, or what they call it, Khalid Shokat, I think, what has happened is Miftahi has what they call it, used Khalid Shokat, like, you know, uh, to, to promote, to promote his timetable, like, you know, and uh, to get him on board, like, you know, to use his ideas, like, you know, of not only the 18 degrees, because it's not quite something against 18 degrees Miftahi. So he has fed him, he's misinformed him, like, you know, um, a lot of misinformation, like, which he has provided him. And Khalid Shokat, like, you know, I think, it seems like that he fell into Miftahi's trap, like, you know, and he has accepted what, whatever Miftahi has given him. Or with a long year of observations and this and this and like, you know, and this is a... So Khalid's come to that, what you call it, mentality now, like, you know, these observations are the main, what you call it, uh, crucial thing now. Not calculations, not degrees, like, you know, and that higher attitudes, that what you call it, is, uh, the observations are showing, like, you know, that it's not meeting degrees now. But yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah, because if you see his little mic, he gave Dr. Yeah. Khalid documents about but most of Pakistan said so their views have changed to of 18 degrees. Yeah. And, and Dr. Khalish actually published those on his website. Then we've actually found out that information from contact in Pakistan, and actually we found out that, that those emails weren't true. 
and literally they were published on his website for a long period of time. I think the crucial thing here is the difference is that in terms of in terms of the actual condition taking into consideration, it's considering life pollution. It's taking those factors into it in terms of making sure we know what direction the sun is rising. It's checking all those things before going out. And we've got, you know, people, if people are there at the at observation, they actually know about the stars and in terms of what's going on, where the sun is, and the direction of all these things. And we're considering all these factors. It's not just we're going to go outside in location that's not suitable for these observations for that. And I think that's the crucial difference. And I think that's why our, even though we've made seven or eight observations, these observations that have matched, the times have matched, almost exactly to 18 degrees times because of the of, of the timing we've taken and we've gone out most of it you know we go out without even looking at time beforehand we'll go and we might, i've actually got separate reports from different people and and we can actually show that so much it occurs at 18 degrees that's what we've shown and we've actually advertised it openly we've told people freely come along with us they come along with us and come and see subasidic at that location yeah, that location is absolutely perfect we literally we're on a beach and we're looking directly at where the sun's coming up. And that's what's, if, if, if you're great about the location. If you want to come back to me, so we can talk about this as well. I'm sure we'll have explained this last time, in terms of the, in terms of the inconsistencies. Now, in terms of the answers, um, if, if those of you who want to see an email conversation that I had with Mar Miftahi in, in about a few years ago, about two years ago, you can look on the WFAC website. It's got the whole email conversation there. And there you can see I'm asking all these questions. What's your evidence for this? You've said this. What's the reason behind that? And and you can see the answers that you know that have appeared as a result of that. Okay. Now, this is something else interesting. That in 1988, the the formula given to Massage was different to the one given in 1989. So 1988, if you look at the times here, you can see lots and lots of blanks. So, so let me explain this again. Basically, what this is, this is a chart given to different massages to work out their time table. So across the UK, if you know, work out your solar times. If that's Subha Sadiq, then you've got to take away, you know, one hour, so you've got to take away one hour, 40 minutes, if you want the 1st of February, if you're 1st of February times, and that will give you a Subha Sadiq time. Okay, that's basically what it did. But in 1989, then all of a sudden, all these observations turned up. We've got no evidence of all records of these times. And it was simply a matter of making the timetable fit. It was the setting. It was making it fit a, a straight curve and making it straightforward. And that's why, that's why some people have issues with 18 degrees. It's like, it's not, you know, 18 degrees, okay, generally is a curve. However, there are times of the year where there'll be a dip. If we're going from 18 degrees in the, you know, throughout the year and we switch into one seventh method, then there'll be a dip, there'll be a change to hours. And some people don't like that. But in this country, with the climate we've got, these things are necessary and they have to happen. And whether people are like it or not, they don't get it, we have to explain it to them. There's no kind of, it's, there's no other options if you want. Because although when Hezbollah have been asked about this, they produced a, a report last year um, answering lots of the, if you want, or attempt to answer a lot of these questions. And they said that these changes, these differences, are within the boundaries of Sharia. The question is, for us, is who sets those boundaries? Are you setting your own boundaries that you set your meeting? So what, 30 minutes off is fine for you? An hour off is fine for you. Who says yes and who says no to that? And that's the biggest issue. And by supporting a timetable, it's given them more and more weight. And say, actually, we've said it's within Shari Hudud, so therefore it's within Shari Hudud. When the Muftis themselves who have checked that, if you want to check the timetable, from their own towns in India have said, actually, your timetable isn't correct. This is, this is their other times as well. This, is, this was the first work given by Dharam Karachi. And this kind of, I think, summarizes the whole thing. Okay? That these errors came about due to a lack of knowledge with regards to Subha Sadiq. That's it. If they had the knowledge, if they knew where to do the observations, if they knew what they were looking for, if they knew all that information, then those errors would not have come about. And, and that's... And, and you can see, like, I've got a report here. These are observers that went out with them. What they've said in their report is that the observers were very knowledgeable. They were very kind of aware of that. So what we've done is we've actually sent someone to interview these people. And, and, and I'll say, what knowledge did you have? These are the replies. So this, this is Mohammed Sidat. My recollection is that on two or maybe three occasions, I was at this person's house in Blackburn. 
you chewed them up for Ramadan after Awi. We used to leave from here late at night. And on these occasions, my Yaqub Miftahi took me in the car towards the area where the present after is and requested me to observe Surah Hadik. I really did not know what was going on, but do you remember trying to observe Surah Hadik? And my Yaqub Miftahi kind of said, Oh, there it is. Okay? I just happened to be present at his house at the time. Okay? Uh, you can see the other report. At that time, I'd been in the UK for six years. He used to spend a lot of time at our friend's house. Okay? On a few occasions, I was at this person's house during Ramadan, after Rawi, when my Yaqub Miftahi came to pick up Hafiz Ahmed. He informed my Yaqub Miftahi that I was a friend relative at home. My Yaqub invited me to join them as well. This happened on five occasions. At one time, the late Mahdi was there as well. Yeah, he also joined us. At that time, I had been in the UK for six years. I didn't know anything about Subah Sadiq or Shafak. I just happened to be at this person's house and joined upon invite. So we see in the books it says, we've got, we went out with experts observing. You know, from interviews with people that went out to observe, we found that this, this wasn't the case. Another observer, my Ismail Manuguri, he went out to observe as well. He has now retracted his views on what time Isha time occurs. He was there observing. Now, people are slowly realising that even those who went out for observation are realising now, there, there are severe issues with this. Okay? It's just a shame that it's, it's convenient. Right now we've got a time when we can either tell our people we've got a you know, Fajr beginning time of 10 past 1, or we've got a Fajr beginning time at, at, at 2.51. The question is, what's convenient? And, and, and to be honest, that's a shame in our, in our deen, if I, in our sharia. If, if that's what we're fussed about, if we're more interested in convenience than actually the correct time of which is, which is uh, uh, as I'm sure Sheikh Haitha mentioned last week, or last time, that there's Ijma on 18 degrees. It's not something there's, 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 there's some views, you know, there's a majority of you that says something else. The majority, and there's almost a consensus on 18 degrees. And any other timetable, let's look at it and scrutinize it. And this is what Mufti Sajjan has told Dr. Khalid on a number of occasions. You've said you've got extensive observations. We've seen one set of observations, the Blackman observations, and we've torn it apart, really. If you've got other observations, let's see them. Let's look at that, let's analyse and scrutinise them, then we can actually have an adult discussion about your timetable. If you're just going to say we've got extensive time to, um, observations, when the, 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 you know, the largest part of your, of, of your observations, we kind of, you know, we've got plenty of errors in there. So let's see the rest of them now. But he has not given us these things. Dr. Khan, on a number of occasions, he has been quite welcoming. So we initially told him that you know, these people have quoted this scholar, so I scanned the pages from the text, and she said, he didn't say this, like, oh, this is what he actually says. It is a more time after learning. His view is 18 degrees. So it, it's when she scanned those pages and sent it to him. And he changed his view. He, he, he didn't change his view. He took off those bits of text from his website. In terms of the Pakistan, he had Muftaki Usman's view. He had on there initially. That Muftaki had switched to 15 degrees. We emailed... Um, if some email Pakistan found out we, if you want to send that information, he took it off his website. Okay, so he is accepting in some terms, but in terms of making a full retraction of his timetable, that he, he has not done yet. The latest um, email sent by Mufti Saji kind of explains if you want these errors, and I, and I think if you can get a copy of that on the way, I'm sure that'd be very very useful. Um, I, ha I haven't gone through the whole presentation, a big simple because uh, I'm sure you've seen it before, but I think. In terms of our recommendations, um, is that our recommendations are for Subha Sadiq, we use 18 degrees across the year, when 18 degrees occurs. This was also the agreement made in 1983, that even though all of us sat down and uh, 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 came to agreement, I think in 1982, there was an agreement in this masjid. 1984. 84, was it? 84. Okay, 84, it happened here where they made an agreement on, uh, on 18 degrees. I think it's, it's, it's time... Two times at one. 2001 as well. So, so, so there's been a number of times when agreement has been made about this. So our recommendations are that we use 18 degrees time for Subha Salik times, whether it's difficult or whether it's easy. Inshallah, there is Wusai and Sharia. For people who can't fast, there are options that they can, they can give Fidya, they can fast at another time. We're, we've got that. But generally, people can fast. I've got you know, teachers that who actually come from abroad and have diabetes and all sorts of issues. They come in, they say it's a few extra hours. And then, and, and they can manage to do that. And if not, there's, you know, there's also in Sharia. So we use 18 degrees times. When 18 degrees doesn't occur, then currently we're looking at using the nearest day method. 
So for example, for two months of the year in London, from about 22nd May to about 22nd July, doesn't occur. Currently we're using the nearest day method, which is basically whatever the last time there was, we use that for the two month period. So right now in, in IRE it's about 105, 106, we use that for the two month period. But that varies according to destination. We can also use the one seventh method. These are all mentioned. Imam Nawi mentions it in his books. It's mentioned by Alama Shami Rahimullah, who quotes Imam Nawi Rahimullah. So again, we can use four methods. Near as day, we can, we can divide the night into two. The first half is for Maghrib and Isha. The second half is for, it's for Fajr, or, or he's a one seventh method, which divides the night into seven parts. First seventh for Maghrib Salah, five seventh for Isha, and the last seventh for Fajr time. That's also a possibility. So, and all the other option is, is we can use Akrabul Bilad, which is the nearest place where 18 degrees does occur. That occurs roughly out at about, I think it's about 48 degrees and 33 minutes. That's the kind of last place. It's, it's, it's a place in France where the last place where it occurs. So we can use that method as well. I think what would be nice is if the, ulama, or if, if the massages are using 80 degrees, although all four methods are completely permissible, we should agree on one of them or which one of them we should all use. I think we should actually consider that if we're ready to move ahead. Then the Isha Salah, there is, there is an issue because using 18 degrees would be unworkable. And in terms of Isha Salah, there is some Mus'a in Sharia. Because we've got two opinions on, on when Isha occurs. We've got when the redness fades or when the whiteness fades. Those are both options. In terms of the redness fading, the, the people who have observed this, they've found that the redness fades... Um, it kind of, it, it's not straightforward, it's not easy to kind of attach to a degree, it, it, you can't, it, because it depends on a number of factors, it depends on moisture in the air, as, atmospheric conditions, lots of other factors, and that's why scholars who have observed it, so they found it between about 12 degrees and about 16 and a half degrees, they found the redness fading, okay, in terms of, in terms of whiteness fading, that's 18 degrees, that's, that's kind of accepted by all, so, so there is some leeway in terms of Isha Salah, and also by using 18 degrees across the year with Isha Salah, it will be very difficult, it will be practically impossible to, to, to read Isha Salah. Because the last time Isha occurs, I think it's about half 12 at night. And the first time for it, late, the earliest time for Fajr is about 5 past 1. How would you read Isha, Darawi, Suhoor? You know, it's, it's too difficult. So therefore, we use some flexibility that Sharia gives us with Isha time, because Isha time isn't as definite as Fajr time. Because Fajr time is, is completely prescribed by the Quran. So therefore, there's no kind of moving away from Fajr time. But Isha time, there's a bit of Musa there. So what we've been using so far, we've been using one seventh method from when we feel that times are going to get difficult now. So from about, in London, from about March 8th to about October 8th, we use a one seventh method across that period. And that also avoids any jump as well. So that kind of movement towards that for Isha Salah. Again, we are looking at other methods for that, if a last thing. Again, if we agree on a basic formula, we're happy to kind of discuss the other kind of variables. What we can't argue about, inshallah, based on this research, is that Subha Salih occurs at 18 degrees. What we do in the two months when it doesn't occur, and for Isha Salah, for part of the year when there's difficulties, let's have a discussion about it. You know, let, let, let's discuss that. If there's some leeway there, inshallah. Are there any questions before I, I, I've kind of flung through? Normally, this program takes about an hour or so. Kind of really. This one point, uh, this needs clarification is because if the observation was done during persistent twilight and they are giving first pack of light and tabayun, but we are saying from 23rd, 21st May or 23rd May to 21st July, persistent twilight. So how is it that they did get some observations? I, th I, th I think the, c the crucial thing is how did they get any observations in, 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 in the absence of... The issue were, the reason why we disregard a lot of the observations it's because they fail to take into consideration atmospheric conditions. I think mean, that's the crucial bit. If they're observed in the right locations. Now, we, we went to observe persistent twilight um, two weeks ago, on, on, on roughly May 23rd, 24th, we went out to observe it. And what we found was, when that was the case, normally we were used to observing Subhasari in a northeasterly direction. We found that it moved further, that was closer to north northeast. Now, if you haven't got the utensils in front of you, the facilities in front of you, to check when the sun is actually moving or whatever, then how do you know where the sun is? So if I was to look in a particular direction, I would have seen darkness, had I not had the utensils. But because we had the facility, we realised that actually, on this occasion, although the whole year we were used to the sun rising northeasterly, but, the, but, but now the sunrise, based on, had actually shifted. 
And that's, and that's the whole details about it. That when a person understands that to observe Swasadi is not for any old person, it's for people who can actually, before they go out, look at the conditions. What are you doing? Where are you going? Your location, conditions, weather, forecast, direction. All these things are crucial. If these aren't considered, then again, you will observe darkness in persistent twilight because you want a direction that you're looking at. Are there, is that clear? Is that true? Yeah, it needs to be clarified because people will say, well, why throughout the year it's 18 degrees and only in these two months is persistent in toilet? How do you know it is persistent in toilet? So that's why, obviously... Well, to be honest, we've observed and well, we've actually seen it. But in terms, of, in terms of across the board, there is that. Now the question here is, and this is why we've got the research across, across the world, that, that actually states that the, the first light occurs when the sun is 18 degrees to the horizon. If the sun doesn't reach 18 degrees to the horizon or doesn't go beyond 18 degrees of the horizon, then we'll never get darkness. And that, this, is, this is where we can actually use other methods. If we can show that observations match 18 degrees, therefore, if there's no 18 degrees, the sun doesn't reach 18 degrees, therefore there's no light, or there is no darkness. Yeah? There's no darkness, then again, we've got no true night. And that we see in the sun months. That's, that's basically the, I don't know, it's, it's not a straightforward answer. Sometimes this issue is so difficult to explain. So we, you know, we've got experts sitting, and uh, sometimes it's difficult for, for us to get it. It's even more difficult to explain to the public. It, it, it is a complex issue, definitely. These time people now, you know, you've got the Isha time of the Fajr, the Isha that go very, very late. Mm -hmm. So what time do you start to roll here? I think you part mentioned that. I did mention that. I, th I, th I think we need to discuss that again. With, with Isha time, there is that flexibility, because Isha time is not as definite as Fajr time. In terms of Fajr time, we've got the verse of the Quran, which is quite clear, when the white for the, you know, becomes distinct from the black, that's when Fajr time occurs, and, and scholars have explained that in detail, what that means. It refers to the first light, which eventually spreads horizontally. Now that's, that if you want to study. But in terms of Isha time, in terms of Isha time, there is, you know, show that grid again, okay? But in terms of Isha time, there's more flexibility there. Because, simply because of, um, in terms of Isha time, it could occur when the, white, when the whiteness um, disappears, or when the redness disappears. In terms of the redness disappearing, um, it's very hard to fix the redness on a particular degree, simply because that the redness is dependent on, on different conditions, including atmospheric pressure, through the moisture in the air, and lots of other factors. So what generally, what, the, the approach that we've taken um, is that we've approached this and said that when um, we will use a method of, of, of dafdir, of approximation, from when times start becoming difficult for people, okay? And, and, and also, we will ensure that these times will not go beyond when the redness fades, unless it's completely necessary. So for example, if those times go beyond, say, 10.45 at night, each other time becomes later than, say, 10.30 or 10.45, then we believe that's, that's very late for people. If you're performing Tarawih Salah at 11 o'clock onwards, and you've got to make Suhoor at 1 o'clock in the morning, then that's very difficult. So therefore, it, it only goes beyond the, before the redness phase for maybe about, about 10 or 15 days.